Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and late last week we put out the video about the Canon EOS RP because we got a hands-on preview with it and you can check out the link down below to check that one out. But at that point I wasn't able to open the raw files in Adobe Lightroom. Well I now have a raw converter so I'm able to open them and that's why we went ahead and did a test between the RP, the R, and the 6D Mark II so that you can see the differences between them shot in low light and also shot at base ISO so you can see how the dynamic range looks. I want to remind you that you can download all of these sample DNG files to open up in Adobe Lightroom so that you can analyze them for yourself. I don't get super technical on these files when I'm shooting my own photos, but I know some of you guys out there like to play with the files and push it to the extremes to see how well they hold up and because I'm giving you the raw files you can go ahead and do that with all three of these cameras. I want to make it clear that we use the same lens on all three of these cameras. Now that's the 16 to 35 2.8 version 3 from Canon. Now the reason we used an EF lens is because we needed to test it on the 6D Mark II as well as adapt it to the EOS R and the RP. So let's jump in and look at the first image. Now of course this isn't the most extravagant landscape in the world, it's just a test shot to show you guys dynamic range. You've got the bright area on the right and you have the dark areas on the left. This one is the EOS RP, but what I want to do is what other people like to do is go up five, ex five stops. I'm going to do it on all three of these, five stops, and we're going to go up five stops. And the reason we're going to do this Honestly, I don't know the reason we're going to do it. I'm going to show you some differences that we found when zooming in on these images. So let's take a look at the RP versus the 6D Mark II because we think that they're very similar sensors. Now we don't just think it, it's basically the same sensor with just some slight tweaks and you have the Digic 8 processor in the RP. So we've got the 6D Mark II on the right and we've got the RP on the left. We're going to zoom in 3 to 1 on the background here. Look at the, the, the awning right here. You can see that on the 6D Mark II the color noise is more prevalent and it's a little cleaner in terms of just the color noise that's there on the left hand side. You can see that they're very similar in all of these areas but there's just a slight edge to the EOS RP. But when we put that against the EOS R and the RP together, we're going to see a difference. So I'm going to hit N and then I hit the XY and we've got the R on the left and the newer RP on the right and we're going to zoom in on the same thing. So we zoom in and you can see the differences between these two. The R definitely looks better than the RP. But can we just stop for a second and say that this is pushing something to the extreme of five freaking stops? If you are five stops off in your exposure and you try to bring it back, you deserve to be punched or slapped in the face. The whole name of the game is get your exposure damn close. If you're within a stop, even if you need to push a stop in the half, you should be able to save your files, especially when you shoot RAW, they should look perfectly fine. But you guys want to see this test, so you can go download these RAW files and check it out for yourself, but this is, just, let's just look down here. You can definitely see the difference in the noise when you raise it five stops between the R on the left and the RP on the right. Keep in mind, we use the same settings for all of these cameras. Now we can't make it exactly perfect because of the differences between the cameras, but we got it as close as possible in terms of the framing, composition, and everything else. Now before we jump into the high ISO test, I want to remind you that I'm giving away your choice of a camera that's valued at $3,300 or less. That means you could get any one of these cameras or basically any camera on the market that's $3,300 or less. You can get entered for free. Go to bit.ly slash megafro to get entered into the mega camera giveaway for hitting a million subscribers soon. Let's jump back in. Here we have the EOS R and in this frame we put me because why not use me as a test shot? I also have a data color spider checker right here so you can zoom in and check out the color. I'm just holding it and you can check it out. Now I'm not going to analyze these terribly too much. I want you guys to download these raw files. Uh, but we did use the same settings for each of these three cameras. We shot at 6400 ISO, then 12800 and up to 25600 on all of the cameras. So this is the RP, 12800. 
25,600. And the same thing here with the 6D Mark II. But I do want to point out one thing. We have the same color set across the board. We've got the same profile. We have the same settings. We have the same lenses. We have the same white balance and tint because we, we match that across the board. And just look at the difference between the color. Look at the shift. You're a little more magenta on the 6D Mark II than you are on the RP. Why? I'm not sure. It's just maybe the nature of how they're processing the files, but that's why we do these tests so that you can download these files and check them out for yourselves. So while I have it up on the screen, let's take a look at the EOS RP versus 6D Mark II, both taken at 12,800, and let's zoom in and see what we've got. Now we're zooming in three to one, which is an extreme amount. Look at the, wow, what a bicep it looks like. It actually looks better in this case on the, on the 6D Mark II. I'm not sure why, but again, you can download these raw files and check it out for yourself. And at first I thought that the, the blacks looked a little better on this side because of the data color. You can see that it's blacker, but this one's also tilted back further, which means maybe it's picking up a reflection from the lights that we used. But just take a look at the shadow areas. Take a look at these wristbands. Which one looks better to you? And that's the whole point of giving you these raw files to download. They're linked down below. And before we jump into the real world examples, because I'm giving you real world raw files to download as well from when we were in New Orleans, let's put the R against the RP at 12,800 and zoom in on something. Ooh, bicep. So we've got the R on the left hand side, which looks like you have a little more detail in the shadow area, but it's ever so slightly uh, slight detail. Let's zoom in on the data color right here. So you can see it looks just cleaner, a little sharper, because we have the same focus on both things, same area each time. It just does look better on the R's side. So that's something for you to look at. Is the R better? We would think so because it has the basically the 5D Mark IV's sensor in it. So you have to determine for yourself which one is better for you to go with, even though one's more expensive. But at the end of the day, most people just starting out won't be able to know the difference between both of the cameras. But being that you have the raw files to look at, you can see if you see a difference and if it really makes that much of a deal to you. So let's jump into real world shots. Here we go. Real world shots. This is done with an 11 to 24. Uh, this, I just love the color. I'm still zooming in three to one. So let's make that back to one to one so we can get a realistic look at this. But I love the colors. I love the tones of this file. It looks really good. Now, this was an interesting one as too, just because we're using the, the, the 51.2 on this. We're at native ISO of 100. We're at 1 4,000th of a second, which maxes out that camera uh, because it doesn't go higher than 1 4,000th at f2.8. This should look super clean, super sharp, and super colorful, and it does. While we're here and I have the Fro-Pak 1 open, let's just check out Waffle House. I just thought Waffle House looked cool. Look at that, and one more. Skittles. Skittles looks cool as well. And if you want to check out Fropack 1, go to fronosphoto.com slash presets. The presets are still on sale, so go check them out, play with them, and see what you like. But yeah, I, I love the way they work here. But look, this is beautiful. This looks great. I don't care what camera you took this with. It just looks super smooth, super nice with a 70 to 200. Uh, lower light situation, this is 3200 ISO. Not the most extreme in the world, but done with the 11 to 24. Another cool file to play with. Just a wider shot to play with as well, done at 3200. Then a portrait at 1250 ISO. ISO, and then I brought it down using daylight coming from outside to 100 ISO, and you just zoom in on this, and these raw files do look sweet, they look super nice, it also doesn't hurt when you have one, a very good looking model with great eyes, and two, awesome RF glass, because that's what Canon has kicked ass with. This is done at 100 ISO, a nice conversion to black and white. And finally, a real world example at 12,800 from the RP. Now, remember, again, Download these raw files, the link is down below. Pixel peep all you want. You have sample images from the R, the RP, and the 6D Mark II. You've got setup shots, and you also have real world examples to play with. I think the files look really good from the RP based off of the price. And, and again, I'm putting great glass on it, but it's in essence a 6D Mark II for the mirrorless world. That camera was fine, the files look fine, so you need to determine if it works for you. So that's why we make these videos. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. 
That's where I'm going to leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com. See ya. Jared Poland. I almost forgot my name. Mm -hmm.